my name is Dr. Adam Bright Jobu, and uh, I am your lecturer on this course. Uh, the purpose is to walk you through the slides and then to make some suggestions that will help you to uh, focus on your study and all that. So th this course is basically about the development of sociology. And uh, as you know, every discipline has its beginning. Sociology developed within some historical context that uh, uh, made it possible for thinkers about society uh, to come out with certain ideas that today constitute the bedrock of sociology. And I'm sure uh, by now you know some of the founders of sociology and uh, Agus Comte, Herbert Spencer, Karl Marx, and uh, Weber. So basically these are the people we are going to be talking about and we're going to look at their work in detail. And so uh, the course is more or less history. Uh, it's like what uh, did all these founders say and what meanings does it have for sociology. So before we go on, I would like to encourage you to take your lessons seriously, go through the slides, and I have recommended some text books that you have to read. Now, uh, we have one particular textbook that we use in the University of Ghana, and this is the book. Yeah, this is the book. So the title is Sociological Theory, Classical Ideas, and Their Application in the Context of the, uh, in the African Context. So you can get a copy from the uh, sociology department. Uh, your colleagues are the University of Ghana here, it's a standard text they use for this particular course. So I can confidently say that most of the things you are finding here in your course is contained over here. So just try to get a copy. Now, about sociology, it did not just happen uh, out of the blue. Uh, there were certain socioeconomic and political conditions in Europe uh, in, uh, we, between 1700, 1800, and 1900, that brought uh, the subject up. And so it will be interesting for us to know what these conditions are. But before then, why don't we say we go back a bit before this period, this uh, two or three centuries, the 18th centuries, 18th and 19th century. Uh, Europeans, before the 18th and the 19th centuries were also just living like uh, many traditional African societies because uh, in those days they didn't have industries. So basically they were rural, agrarian, they live in small, small communities and then even people, most people have to live within those communities and die. So there were no mobility, geographical mobility as we see today. So they were typically uh, traditionalist. And so their worldview was also shaped by those conditions. So people live in one area, one community, spend their whole life there, just engage in agriculture, and some cottage industries, but then they never moved and all that. So that was before the 18th and the 19th centuries. Now, Within the 18th and 19th century, Europeans experienced very, a very big transformation, which in sociology we call the Great Transformation. What it means is that they moved away from being typically traditional agrarian societies into a modern society. Because the break in this period was so dramatic social scientists or philosophers began to deliberate on what were the causes of this transformation, the consequences of this transformation. And so uh, the transformation were so dramatic, they were so uh, anarchical that they created social anarchy, social problems and others. So the idea that uh, as a subject you come out to look at these conditions and then with the hope that the knowledge that will be generated 
will aid them to reform or restructure their own societies. So this is the, the breaking point in their society that gave rise to sociology. Now, when it comes, when it comes to the factors of the factors that give rise to sociology, we want to look at the French political revolution, the growth of science and technology, industrial revolution and urbanization, the growth of cities and the creation of social problems, the rise of socialist ideas, decline of religion, enlightenment ideas, and of course, European colonization across the world also has, uh, enabled them to get exposure to other peoples and cultures. Now, I mentioned that there was a dramatic break with tradition, traditional society, and then there was a movement to modern society. What it means is that, you know, by the 14th century, we Europeans began to experience what they call the Renaissance. That is because uh, the church, which was so dominant in Europe at the time, began to suffer some, some weaknesses. And so Europeans began to have new ideas coming into their societies. Now, the term Renaissance means rebirth. It, it seems as if Europeans have been sleeping. They were dominated by religion, the Catholic Church in particular, and all that. So the Renaissance period was a period where new ideas were coming as a result of the weakness uh, of the church establishment. So Europeans were free to think, to think about new ideas, about things in society, so that they were not held captive to religious explanations. And this period was also the beginning of sciences, the natural sciences that we all know of. So they moved from the 14th century, 15th century, 16th century, 17th century. So things were gradually building up so that by the 18th century and the 19th century, Europe was poised for serious social transformation. Now this, if you go to look at when sciences developed. You also realize that it is within this period that science began and then inventions were being made. For example, the steam engine, the clock, all the scientific things we use today, that was the beginning point of their development. So with the Renaissance coming in, new ideas coming in, and the explanations of the world, nature, and all that began to be based on science then we see science developing very quickly. So that by the 16th century and 17th century, Europeans entered a period they themselves called the Enlightenment period. Now the Enlightenment period came after the Renaissance. Now Europeans are seeing that they, were, they are now being enlightened. And what does it mean when we talk about enlightenment? Enlightenment means a time where the reasoning powers of humanity or human beings were being celebrated. So they were, they were moving away from superstitious past, traditional past, where everything was, center, the, everything was explained as, this, as uh, through the work of God. And so they moved away. They challenged their own assumptions and also the fact that society should be uh, ruled by only kings. Some people are just serfs and then this continue and all that. Now with this enlightenment period, everything changed. Most things changed actually. So the enlightenment then brought uh, some philosophers to the scene. And these philosophers were also trying to critique their own society. So that the things that were not being done properly, the social injustice whereby the, the nobility, that's the aristocrats, some group of people who are few, but they own the lands, 
And then everybody was reduced to being like a slave or what they call the serfs who were serving them. This was unjust in their own understanding. And so uh, the philosophers tried to critique society. So then in France in particular, there was a socioeconomic crisis. And so the ordinary people seized on this crisis and rebelled and actually they created what today we call the French political revolution. And that was in 1789. Now, the consequences of this revolution were very grave. Uh, it will interest you to know that the, the kingdom or the monarchy was totally destroyed. The king was murdered. And so the whole palace was ransacked. So now, from 1789 to 18. 99, there was no political order in France. There was anarchy. There wasn't one political center that was so powerful to override all the other centers. So that created crisis. Now, in this period, the philosophers of the day decided that they should examine society more scientifically, and then come out with reforms so that they can recreate social order. And this is why Agus Comte, the founder of sociology, as we have learned already, came onto the scene. Now Comte's vision was that once the natural sciences have made progress, inventions, uh, technology is available in society, they are making positive change in society, then they should also develop a science of society so that the knowledge that will be generated would then be used to reform society. So then came his idea that there should be sociology. And now you remember that he had wanted to call sociology social physics. Now social physics, that should alert you to the fact that he was actually having that vision that physics, just as physics in the natural sciences was making progress, technology and others, we should adopt the same principles that physics uh, was using to study society. You know, physics does things about natural laws, for example, the law of gravitation and all that. So if society can be studied scientifically and also we can have laws of society, which he calls social laws, they will be in a position to redress the crisis in France and also help humanity. Now, but he didn't use social physics because there was a Belgian philosopher and statistician, Adolf Quetelet, who had used that term. And so, can't be eccentric, he wanted to be so innovative, he came out with this concept we call sociology, which is a combination of two words, socio and logos, which we have already learned about in the level 100 and 200. So that was the beginning of sociology. But then, because of the context within which it, sociology was emerging, we had a lot of problems at that time. So yeah, science came in, technology came in, then with science and technology available, Europeans could industrialize. And once they industrialized, cities began to emerge because you know industries usually are located in cities. So now for once people move from their traditional societies, communities, <laughs> and then they come to the cities looking for jobs. And then of course jobs were not available, just like we find in Africa or Ghana today where young people from rural areas come to the cities, there are no jobs, unemployment, even issues of accommodation, overcrowding and all that. So this also uh, fueled what we call the social problems of the day. And so sociology also began to look at those social problems and think that uh, we sociologists can then have solutions to some of those problems. Then of course, there was the rise of socialist ideas. Socialism is the belief that 
there shouldn't be oppression or we should minimize uh, social inequality or the state should take over everything man the economy so that everybody will enjoy uh, that contrast with capitalism where we say that people should uh, private ownership of property so that some people in the process will leave some people behind people are poor some are rich and all that socialist ideas uh, those ideas that seek to correct these anomalies and so Europeans having going to having having these problems at hand some were agitating for socialism that the state should overcome try to overcome these social problems by nationalizing all the industries that emerge and all that then of course the period is or was also one of decline of religion the church that was dominant in the european context for so many ages now because science is coming of age technology was coming industrialization rationalization of society europeans were no longer believing in those blind feet that God is the center of all our activities should be just us worshiping God and all that. Europeans were moving away very fast from there. And as I said, the Enlightenment ideas were also ideas about celebrating the reasoning powers of people so that people are not held captive to dogmas and all that. So basically the argument is that Europeans were once in darkness they became uh, enlightened and if you read european history they themselves has have these concepts they use that there was the age of darkness there was the age the middle age then there was renaissance then renaissance was followed by enlightenment and after enlightenment modernity and science science so this transformation this uh, change that we see in the 18th and the 19th century actually moved uh, Europeans radically away from primitive, superstitious, and past and all that. And so they jumped or were moved into a world that was becoming quickly modernized. And so the tensions, the problems that were created at that time, and I'm sure if you were living within this era and you are socially conscious, maybe you have also written down something about the transformation, which probably would have constituted the beginning of sociology. This is what the Europeans did. And uh, it should interest you to know that the countries that were pivotal in this transformation were Britain, France, and Germany. And the consequence of this transformation was that these Europeans had technology, they developed maritime technology, they could sail on the sea, they ventured out the world, into the world, and they conquered all other nations. And so, today as we speak here, you see that French in particular and English have become hot, the international languages. Because of this early transformation these people experienced, it gave them competitive edge over all other societies. They move across the world to North America, which now we call Canada and USA. They move to Latin America. They move to Africa, where there were local resistances. They easily kill the people to take over the land. They move to Asia. Even though, in terms of Asia, the penetration was late. But where they consolidated themselves so much is in the USA, Canada, Africa, Latin America. In the case of USA today, the, you know, the US calls itself a land of immigrants. The, the original owners of North America were the Indians. Okay, in those days they used to call them the Red Indians. This group were subjected to all kinds of barbarism just in order to conquer and possess their land. Today, those people live in most of the poorest places. They were marginalized and all that. 
The same thing happened in Latin America. Lands were seized, communities were wiped out, diseases were introduced deliberately to wipe them up. In the case of Africa, Africa came after Latin America. The same thing was about to be done here, but you know, Africa is a tough continent. The time they were coming, it wasn't easy because science had not progressed as today. So, you know, West Africa, for example, a lot of these whites were dying. So, in the historical literature, it, uh, those, this region was referred to as the white man's grave because malaria and all that were attacking them. So, they found favorable areas in South Africa, East Africa, because those, East Africa is a, a highland area. So, with height, the temperatures were moderated. So, those places were cooler, resembling their own uh, countries and all that. In South Africa, it's almost a, in the uh, it has the Mediterranean climate, so a cool place and all that. So that is also explaining why, uh, you know, those uh, descendants of Christ in South Africa didn't know uh, they want to possess the place and they don't want to give up until recently. Now, this is the impact of this uh, transformation and on the global level. So Ghana or Africa had its own share. Uh, you know, there was a period where we, slaves were brought from Africa to the, the new world, that's North, the new world of North America today, where they have to go there and work in mines and agricultural fields. And today, the African-Americans we have there, they are the descendants of slaves, predominantly coming from West Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, Benin, and all that. So that is how sociology emerged within Europe. And then the consequences of this scientific and industrial revolution gave them, Europeans, this advantage of our others. And today, they continue to dominate and exploit us. Now, what will follow is the specific founders, what we are going to have is the specific founders. Now, what did they say? Okay, the philosophers who live at that time, they all have something to say about this transformation. So, from your reading, what we're going to do is to just look at the founders one by one, and what did they say? Okay, what did they say? So the first founder we will talk about is Auguste Comte. Comte, the biography is there well, detailed in, for you in the slides, so I don't have to detail that for you right now. So now let's look at his ideas. Yeah, so by way of summary, we can see that the first session has been basically on the factors that give rise to sociology. And we can atomize them as follows. The French political revolution of 1789, the growth of science and technology, industrialization and urbanization, the growth of cities and social problems, the rise of socialist ideas, the decline of religion, the enlightenment ideas, which in a way uh, were also giving rise to the critiquing of society. And finally, I talked about colonialism and European exposure to other cultures. Thank you.